G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. Astronomy can be enjoyed by people of any age, but traditionally it's been dominated by a slightly older crowd. In recent years, this dominance has been challenged by the increasing computerization of astronomy and astrophotography, which is hard for the boomers because the boomers have really only just figured out how to use emojis. Not all boomers. We young whippersnappers <coughs> Our dwarves on the backs of giants, the older generation have been pioneers of the equipment we know and love today. But there's been a huge shift lately, not only in the hardware but the software side of things. Everything from actually capturing the data and controlling the telescope through to processing. Uh, everything is computerized these days and there's been huge leaps. And to be honest, if you're already good with computers, you have a huge starting advantage in this hobby of astronomy and astrophotography today. In this video I'll be talking about a few things, a few different options that we have today to control the telescope. I'll also be talking about ZWO's ASI Air and their current dominance in this whole telescope control situation, but also a new interesting project by QHY called Quarks, which is just on the horizon now. It's literally just getting off the ground and I think this is something we need to keep an eye on. So sit back, relax, open a premix margarita and let me, your best friend, explain to you how hardware and software is changing in today's world of astronomy. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Now, at the ground level, there is no tracking. You can set up on a tripod, just like I took that photo of the moon, and you can see things drift out of frame. If you're using an eyepiece, whatever you're looking at is just drifting off. A step up from that is a kind of motorized mount. It doesn't have to be computerized, but a motor will just keep that R8 running. So in theory, the thing you're looking at doesn't drift out of frame. But then you've got all these go-to mounts, right? Which have motor control on both axis, whether it's an equatorial mount or an alt as, and then you want some sort of software to control it. So at some point you want the computer to do the control for you, which means connecting a computer to your telescope. And these are the main options available to you. These are some of the most popular, not all of them. Uh, I personally use Nina because it's free and it seems to have great community support. There's great plugins being developed for it. It's just working fantastic. So I do preach the gospel of Nina a bit on this channel, but I was using Sequence Generator Pro for a while and that was fantastic and I was very comfortable with that software. But it does get clunky carrying a computer around. You've already got all of this telescope equipment to set up and then you are connecting a computer in the dark, in the cold, in the dew, and maybe that's something you don't want to do. This is where the ZWO ASI Air was such a groundbreaking product. There were others that did similar things in the past, but the ZWO tied it all in a neat little package where you could have a little box that essentially controls the telescope, the mount, the camera, does all your capturing for you, and the interface and the intuitiveness and the ease of use has just grown over the years. Uh, we now have the ZWO ASI Air integrated into a camera, so the camera itself is its own controller for the whole rig. Of course, the problem that people have with the ASI Air is this fact that it is built on open source software, including PhD guiding. Now, the terms for open source software generally mean that you can't use them in commercial projects. The source is open for people to contribute to and to grow the project and to fork the project even, but if you suddenly close the source, it's a bit of a faux pas. And what ZWO has done is taken the PHP source code and use that in their ASI Air. And the other thing that people don't like about the ASI Air project is that it kind of ties you into ZWO stuff. It's not an open ecosystem, it's the ZWO ecosystem. You can only use ZWO cameras. So there are other projects where you can buy a little mini PC or a little box to do all that control and then use other equipment. I did a quick look around and these are the options for you here. Some of them cost more than others. The ASI Air Mini will cost you about $199. TubeTech have one called the Astro Station, which will cost you $3.99. You can build one yourself if you want with a Raspberry Pi box, and there's a project called Astroberry where you can do that. Stellamate X Pro has their own box, which is $2.99, but there is a new box on the way 
from QHY called the Star Master. I don't know how much this is going to cost, but there is something very interesting about this project. Not only will QHY sell the box if you want an all-in-one package, and not only will this box work with any equipment, anything that is Indie compliant, they're actually going to open source the whole operating system. So rather than fall afoul of the open source community and the rules around corporatization, commercialization of software, they are going to open source their software, which means the community can contribute to the project and the whole operating system, you can download the image and install it on a Raspberry Pi for yourself. But we can't be so naive to think it's all roses, right? This seems like a clear response to the ASI Air with its closed ecosystem. And here are some of the images that they've shared on their Discord server. So I'm looking at this now, I can see um, you can turn things on and off. I don't understand what the Chinese is, uh, but we've got Wi-Fi up here. We can see the icons for PhD. We can see a planetarium, which looks to me like some sort of Stellarium version. So maybe they've used the um, Stellarium project as the back end for this. The planetarium certainly looks very functional and pretty. I like that. You can see here that PhD guiding is integrated into the view, and this is all running on some sort of a tablet or a phone by the looks of it. Looks pretty clean, the interface looks nice, and this is kind of what we want to see in a mini PC design, that the interface is actually easy to use on a mobile device as well. Looks like it has a kind of joystick here, maybe that's for manual telescope slew control. We've got a histogram, so you can see the color balance on color images. This is interesting, it looks like it's a planetarium view that shows the location of the telescope and the rotation of the camera chip, and also a live view of the camera chip as well. That's a great way to fit two elements at once into one mobile view. And this is funny, but exactly six minutes ago, which is when I started recording this second rant, uh, the image has dropped for Quark's OS. So this is a beta image. So if you're interested in this project as a viable alternative to ASI Air, I recommend actually getting involved in this uh, Discord community because they are looking for feedback from the community now. So this is your chance to get in on the ground floor and help build a tool that can run on a mini PC. And judging by the specs, you could build this for less than $100. And that kind of price really competes with every other mini PC and control software project out there. Now, this is all brand new. I don't know if the Quarks OS is gonna be any good. I don't have a lot of use for software like that because everything is computerized in Nina. It's running a whole observatory dome and that sort of thing. But for a portable setup, uh, this is something I am interested in. So I'll probably download the image and run up a Raspberry Pi 4 and see if it's any good. And if you can't be bothered with, you know, playing around with Raspberry and stuff like that, you can just buy the Star Master. This is going to be coming out soon. Once QHY and the community figure out the beta versions of this software and get a viable alternative to ASI Air out there in the market. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. I'll be back with more videos soon, so be sure to subscribe if you feel like it. And uh, remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.